very good morning uh, today we would be doing a lecture on uh, the integration of uh, uh, fuzzy logic neural network and genetic algorithms i'm assuming that we uh, already have done uh, something on fuzzy logic we have studied uh, neural network and we have also done some basics of genetic algorithm and dr pankaj agarwal from ims engineering college gazibad now uh, let us first understand uh, why uh, this uh, there is an importance or why there is a requirement of uh, integration and why we are talking about integration of these technologies and how it is going to matter and how it is going to help see uh, if you have uh, studied these technologies separately they all seem to be very powerful technologies but at the same time each and every technology has some its own advantages where it works very beautifully and it has its own disadvantages right and uh, when we are talking about these technologies we are also talking about that we would like to apply these technologies to the complex real world uh, problems to solve in order to solve uh, these complex real world problems at times uh, mere single technology may not be of that useful right and that is why we are talking about the hybridization of uh, the various technologies in some cases fuzzy logic uh, seems to be more powerful uh especially when we have to deal with the uncertainties right and at different places uh, neural networks can be more useful which uh, talks about uh, the learning and the training the way human does it talks about automation it talks about automated learning similarly genetic algorithms uh, uh, are very good efficient at uh, searching and it's an optimization technique so uh, we can use uh, uh, these technologies somewhere and while solving these problems and that is what is the uh, basic purpose of uh, this chapter and, uh, and moreover these habit systems are also important because uh, the problems that we would be talking about the real world problems they can have varied nature of application domains they, the requirements may be varied right so the, the complex domains may have different component problems and each of may require different type of processing and that is why this habit system so in this uh, uh, lecture we would be trying to explore that how these habit systems can be useful and uh, what are the various applications where these habit systems can be can be applied now uh, as we all know that neural networks are very good at uh, finding uh, the patterns learning the patterns they are very good at learning the the the, uh, the patterns uh, which needs to be uh, trained first or which uh, it is also good at uh, clustering the inputs but uh, however neural network are not very good at explaining that how they reach towards their decisions we doesn't know the, the 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 algorithm we doesn't know the logic uh, it is just a kind of function approximation method on which it works right so that is where uh, neural networks uh, may uh, may not be that effective where we would like to explain that how they reach to the solution because uh, at times we also need to look into how that procedure and how that function has built up right similarly fuzzy logic systems uh, they are uh, which can reason uh, the precise information they are good at explaining these decisions right uh, wherever the inputs are vague where wherever there are some issues with the uh, inputs and outputs in that case these fuzzy logic systems can be more useful but again uh, fuzzy logic again has an issue that it cannot automatically acquire those rules the way a uh, neural network does Uh, so there is nothing called automated learning uh, associated with fuzzy systems so uh, they cannot acquire and uh, learn those rules and can make their own decisions so decision making is an issue with uh, fuzzy logic we have to embed those decisions uh, in, in a hard code manner right? and similarly uh, we all know that gas are very very effective uh, search and optimization techniques so uh, since they are just a, a search technique so we cannot uh, apply g alone for solving most of the problems so we need to fuse them with some other technologies so in all uh, the purpose and the objective of the entire uh, lecture today would be these limitations of each and every technology would be the central force driving uh, the behind the creation of these intelligent uh, hybrid systems right so let us uh, first uh, talk something about the hybrid system that uh, what all things and how it can be classified Uh, hybrid systems can uh, generally be classified into three uh, uh, broad categories one is the sequential systems other is the auxiliary system and other is the 
the embedded hybrid systems. So let us uh, discuss each of them one by one. The first comes your uh, sequential hybrid systems. In sequential hybrid system, as the name uh, signifies, we have a technology, suppose we have one technology, then uh, the output of that technology is used as input to the other technologies. So there's something called a pipeline-like structure. So uh, one technology followed by another technology. Uh, somehow uh, in the real world, uh, these uh, kind of hybridization has not proved to be very useful. It is considered to be a weak form of hybridization. So uh, example could be like uh, we, uh, we all know that uh, in neural network, the, uh, the weights uh, we normally take uh, to start with, they are randomized, right? And at times uh, this randomization of weights can be a big issue. So, uh, because uh, every time we can have uh, different random weights and the uh, results can be different. So there has to be some proper way out. There has to be some systematic way of deciding these weights. So that is where we can use genetic algorithms. We can apply genetic algorithms in order to decide upon the weights. And then we can give those weights to the, any kind of neural network to further proceed with. Right. Uh, second is your auxiliary systems. Auxiliary system is uh, quite simple that we have a technology and we use another technology as a, as a, as a sub-module of that technology. That means uh, there can be like, for example, we can use the genetic algorithms into as a sub-module into my uh, neural network solution or a vice versa, right? So the neurogenetic system is an example in which the NN uh, neural network employs a genetic algorithm to optimize the structural parameters because uh, DA is very good at optimizing those uh, the different parameters, right? And uh, the third technology is basically your uh, embedded hybrid systems, like uh, where uh, uh, there is a complete fusion of both the technologies. We can't say that uh, uh, each of the technologies is independent, uh, interdependent on each one of them, right? There's nothing like sequential form. There's nothing like one technology is being embedded into another technology. Both the technologies are being uh, so used as a sub-module of the another technology. So they're embedded, they're fused together. And both the uh, technologies uh, cannot do uh, independently by their own. So fusion of technologies is also sometimes uh, have proved to be very useful. So there can be different ways of uh, doing this hybridization. Like for example, uh, we can endow the neural network with fuzzy capability to increase the network's flexibility to adapt to the uncertain environments because uh, uh, fuzzy uh, systems are good at handling the uncertain and, uh, environments and weakness. So we can uh, use uh, this uh, fuzzy uh, 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 capability into a neural network to, uh, to uh, make it a fuzzy neural system or neural fuzzy systems. Right. Similarly, we can apply the, uh, the neural uh, learning to fuzzy systems to make the fuzzy systems more adaptive to the changing environment. So there can be different ways of uh, hybriding uh, these technologies. So let us take a few examples which uh, are known in the textbooks. One is the genetic algorithm based BPN, that is BPN is here, the back propagation learning. So we can apply the genetic algorithms to decide upon uh, the, the various parameters, including weights and other parameters of the BPN, and then we can use uh, uh, the BPN. And similarly, we can have fuzzy BPN, where we can use, uh, uh, we can train the, uh, we can use the fuzzy systems in order to, to tail uh, the fuzziness uh, into the environment by uh, applying up uh, back propagation learning. And similarly, we can have a simplified fuzzy art map where the neuro fuzzy habit with recurrent networks can be also used. And uh, we can have fuzzy associative memories. We all know that associative memories are useful uh, ways to, uh, to store the things. So uh, rather than storing a, a hard, rather than storing a, a complete uh, a pattern, which is, uh, uh, which is, uh, 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 which is absolutely true or false, we can uh, start uh, storing fuzzy uh, inputs as well. Similarly, we can have uh, fuzzy logic uh, control genetic algorithms also. So there are different uh, ways in which uh, different examples uh, of hybrid systems which are known in true uh, literature. Uh, so uh, this uh, lecture would uh, specifically uh, talk about the genetic algorithm based PPN, right? We would be uh, doing what? We would be taking BPN as the major source of the problem solving mechanism, but uh, we would be using the genetic algorithms in order to, to, to decide, in order to build the, uh, the 
weight matrix in order to see that uh, how that randomized weight initialization is uh, replaced by the genetic algorithm based uh, weight determination method. So uh, we all know that uh, BPN, back propagation, uses a gradient descent algorithm, right, which uh, talks about uh, uh, the first order derivative of the squared error, the root mean square error of the, the target and the, the calculated output. So uh, in order to minimize this, we use what? Uh, in order to minimize this error, we, uh, we are uh, using a gradient descent algorithm, which is the most popular algorithm uh, to be used in uh, BPN. But the biggest issue with uh, gradient descent is that it often gets stuck into local minima. That is, uh, if you have uh, gone through the neural network or subject, then you would have been knowing about what is local minima and global minima problem. Uh, and this is one of the main issues of BPM. It often stucks into local minima. We often uh, come uh, makes a conclusion by reaching to a local minima and declaring it to be the uh, global minima. That is, uh, you often declare a false result to be your actual result. So, uh, so this local minima problem is uh, one of the major issues of BPM. So this can be handled uh, by uh, by replacing the weight determination method with G. We all know that G are very good at finding the solutions, uh, optimized solutions in lesser number of iterations in a more effective way, in a more effective search. So GS can be used, uh, in fact, to guide this BPN in order to find the necessary weights connections rather than just the random weights. So we would be uh, uh, talking about this, that how this can be done. So uh, uh, GA-based weight determination method. So we'll be going through the different uh, uh, phases of uh, GA in order to determine the suitable weights for uh, our back proportion learning. And then we'll be taking one uh, suitable example also for this, right? Now each uh, solution in uh, GA, uh, here the solution uh, signifies the, the weights that we are going to take, right? So each of the weights, uh, because that only uh, weights help us in building the solution. So each of the weights would be considered as a solution string and uh, it will have some mechanism of determining the fitness of each and every weight, right? So that, that mechanism would be definitely a formula based uh, method. We have to have some kind of function so that we can determine uh, numerically that what is the fitness value of my, uh, my string, that is my weights. And that is what we have learned in the algorithms. And uh, definitely as a part of genetic algorithms, uh, we would be uh, dealing with high uh, fit uh, chromosomes, high fit solutions. And uh, these high fit solutions would be participating in the reproduction. The rest of the chromosomes can be left over, right? The same thing that what happens in uh, genetic algorithms based on the, the concept of survival of the fittest. So we are going to take uh, these best fit solutions. We'll take it forward for the uh, crossover and the mutation uh, process, right? So that new offsprings can be uh, produced in, uh, with the with assumption that it would lead to the uh, finding of more stronger solutions. The next step uh, would be that we have to find ways of encoding these weights, right? So the parameters which represent the solutions, uh, that is uh, these different, each and every different weight, we would start calling it as gene right now because uh, we have to numerically uh, uh, build up the system in a way the, the back proportion uh, requires as input, right? So uh, each of the weights, we would be start calling them as a gene. They would be joined together in order to form a chromosome. That is, they would be all the weights, uh, required number of weights for, uh, for a given uh, problem uh, that needs to be solved through back propagation would be joined in the form of uh, a string. For each and every weight uh, would be called as a gene, right? So let us uh, consider one uh, configuration uh, so that we can uh, have a more clear understanding of what we are saying. So suppose we have input uh, represented through L, hidden inputs is represented through M, and suppose output represented through N. So what we are doing is we are trying to uh, figure out, we are trying to map the entire uh, genetic algorithm process uh, towards what is required as input to uh, BPN, right? So the next step is, uh, uh, now, uh, the, the, the number of weights that uh, would be required in order to determine the, the number of weights that would be required, that can be described by a formula, right, which is called uh, L plus of N, that is the number of uh, 
your uh, uh, inputs and the number of plus the number of outputs multiplied by the the number of hidden units we will uh, verify this formula also while doing the example that uh, whether this formula works or not right and weights we would be taking as real numbers and we will uh, also assume that each of the weight would uh, each of the weight can have maximum four digits because we have to limit the uh, because we are uh, converting everything into numerical configuration, so we need to limit the, 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 the number of digits which each of the weights can be presented with. So suppose the number of digits uh, for each of the gene, for each of the weights is suppose D. And uh, S uh, would be called as a string of decimal values, which comprises of genes, that is which comprises of weights, right? So string uh, would be defined as L plus of N into M, into d because each string is of or each sorry gene is of d the uh, decimal values uh, the digits sorry so uh, this string uh, of whatever length we would generate it would be generated randomly right this string would be generated randomly see again uh, string generation is random but uh, what uh, among this random values which have been generated which of the randomly generated solution would be more useful that is what where the genetic algorithm is going to be used, which was missing in, uh, in uh, BPN because we used to just take the randomly generated inputs and then we used to apply it. And once we complete the entire uh, uh, process, then we comes to know uh, after say many generations that this randomly generated input was of no use. And that is what it can save a lot of efforts uh, by applying the genetic algorithms. So initial population size will consider 2BP, which again uh, would be definitely would be generated through random uh, way, right? Now uh, let us uh, see that uh, uh, through an example, uh, which uh, so that we can have some understanding. So let us consider the number of inputs to be two, middle layers to be two, and the number of outputs to be supposed to. So uh, the formula that we can uh, apply there also, we can be easily verify that L plus of M is what? 2 plus of 2 that is 4 into sorry l plus of uh, n 2 plus of 2 into m that is what we have defined earlier so that would give you 8 so it can be done in this way also l into m right plus m into n that is how we configure our uh, any uh, neural network configurations if you have learned through them now each of the digits uh, suppose the digit length we have taken over here is d uh, is equal to 5 so each chromosome, so each chromosome would be of what length? 8 into 5, that is 40, right? Where we would have uh, 8 uh, weights. We would have total of 8 weights, right? And since each of the weight can be of digits 5, so the total chromosome length could be maximum of, suppose, 8 into 5, 40. Fairly simple, right? Now, uh, this is just uh, uh, the uh, network uh, which can be assumed based on what we have considered the number of inputs, middle layer and the output layers, right? So we have two inputs, we have two hidden and we have two output layers, right? So next, uh, let's uh, take uh, the example so that we can uh, talk about a working example also. So suppose the gene uh, that we have, uh, that would be what zero to uh, seven that is eight genes so each of these gene is nothing but a weight mind you right and uh, suppose that each of the weight can be uh, suppose we have considered uh, randomly generated suppose this is one weight right this is one gene this is another gene these are all uh, randomly generated numbers right these are all randomly generated numbers so this entire uh, string would be called as a chromosome chromosome uh, biologically means nothing but a combination of genes uh, in some order. Uh, similarly, uh, let's take this is gene one, uh, sorry, chromosome one, and this is chromosome two, right? So next, uh, let us uh, let us do uh, that. How we are going to extract the weights? Because because we have a uh, entire uh, string of length forty, which has been generated randomly. So we can always use a random number generator computationally in order to generate a string of uh, 40 uh, comprising of randomly generated weights. But the uh, problem is, or the issue would be that how we are going to extract the, the uh, weights, how we are going to extract all those eight weights uh, out of that uh, completely randomly generated string. So that is what we have to decide upon a way out, right? So let uh, suppose X1 to XD, uh, they represent a chromosome as X presented uh, beforehand. And let's uh, that x k d 
D plus one, I'll come to this. Uh, they represent the kth gene in the chromosome. You'll come to know through an example that would help you in order to understand these uh, uh, formulations. So, uh, so what we've done is, so the actual weight WK would be represented in this manner, right? Right, so I'll, I'll take an example in order to see that how this looks and, and uh, how this can be used. For example, uh, let us take a chromosome A that we have decided or that we have defined earlier, right? So we extract the weights from the eight genes. How, so see, the entire string of 40 has already been generated, suppose, for example, right? Uh, which was nothing but uh, we took an example beforehand. So that was a 40, uh, 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 40 uh, digits were there. So that would be uh, one uh, random entire string that we have as an input. Now out of that uh, entire uh, 40 uh, uh, digit uh, string, then we have to extract the eight of the genes which would be represented for, or which would be used for, uh, uh, for uh, our network, or as an input to the back propagation. So suppose how do we uh, extract gene uh, zero, which was nothing but eight, four, three, two, one. So how it has been extracted is like, we have uh, the value of k is equal to zero. That is, we're talking about the zero gene and the uh, d that is length of uh, each of the string is suppose uh, each of the gene is five that we've already taken. So x k d plus so one, which becomes d is what zero. So uh, sorry, uh, k, uh, sorry, k is zero. So it becomes k one, x one suppose, right? So x1, which comes out to be or what condition? 5 is less than or equal to x1. x1's uh, length is what? x1's uh, x1, that is the first string. The first uh, uh, digit of this particular gene is what? 8. So x1 is 8, which is less than or equal to 9, right? So uh, this can be uh, this can be used as what? So the hence the, the weight that we need to extract out of uh, uh, that is the W0, the first weight that we need to extract that uh, would be your what? That would be uh, the, the, the second, uh, leaving the first uh, the component, that is eight. So the, uh, the previous component was, uh, previous, the previous component was what? Say the string was eight, four, three, two, one, right? And uh, 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 we have extracted eight, suppose. So four, so the, uh, we need to extract what? Four, three, two, one. So what we have done is four into 10 to the power of three, right? Uh, that is the highest uh, uh, length of uh, uh, the digits that has to be used and exponent would be three here, right? Uh, in the decreasing order, then the third, uh, the second, that is the, the third uh, so will be taking three, 10 to the power of two, then two, and then one, right? And then we divide it by the highest uh, exponential digit that we have used in the string. That is 10 to 3. That is how the formula has been decided, right? So, the, by calculating this, the value which comes out to be suppose 4.3. So, this would be declared as what? The weight 0, right? We can have our own formulation in order to extract the different weights out of, it, uh, out of these chromosomes. So, similarly, uh, for gene 1, suppose that is now we have to extract suppose uh, second weight, that is the weight 1. So, the string is suppose 4, 6, 2, 3, 2, right? So again, here the k is one now, and uh, initially the k was zero, and the d is five. So it follows a rule where uh, x six, x six is what? Uh, we're talking about the fourth, uh, this number four. X six is suppose four over here, because this is what? The sixth uh, uh, digit in the chromosome, right? This is the sixth digit that we're talking in the chromosome. So it is, uh, which is equal to four, which is less than equal to five. So this follows our uh, uh, defined procedure. So in order to get this, again, we would be applying the formula that we have defined uh, above. And then uh, we can easily, that is W1 can be, again, uh, the second digit is six, then two, three, and then four. Then divided by the 10 to the three, which comes out to be this value. So minus 6.2 would now be declared as weight one. And similarly, rest of the weights in the form of genes we're talking about, these can be calculated in similar way, right? So gene two means weight two, suppose gene three again is weight three. Similarly, so we would have total of eight weights that would be, uh, uh, that we would be extracting from the, from the various genes uh, from our chromosome. So this is just a formulation, mathematical formulation, which can be, which you can have a different uh, ways of uh, formulating this, right? So next is your, uh, the uh, fitness function. See once, uh, so the, what we have done is, 
we have extracted the weight values uh, from our uh, uh, from our uh, chromosome uh, defined chromosome which was randomly generated now the thing is now uh, since these weights have been extracted so we need to understand how fit these weights are how fit the entire chromosome was right so we have to define the fitness function so let us assume that we have input output uh, given these input um, output uh, pairs where we have two inputs and the two target values so the 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 uh, input output target pair can be presented in this manner very simply so uh, now uh, the uh, what is required is uh, uh, now what is required is a set of input output pairs has been given uh, uh, to a problem p to be solved here right so so next uh, what is required is uh, we uh, first uh, randomly generated the initial population p0 of size 40 right and let uh, c1 to c40 0 representing the the, the the first gene right zero represent the first weight or a gene it represents 40 chromosomes of population p0 right sorry uh, zero representing here is the the first uh, population set right so we would have similarly uh, we would be generating how many populations one by one we would be generating a population of total uh, for 40 population side uh, 40 population generations so one generation will have all the uh, chromosomes and once uh, uh, we would be finding the fitness of each and every chromosome then we'll move on to uh, the next generation with uh, 40 chromosomes again we would be evaluating the fitness of each chromosome in order to find a stronger solutions uh, by applying the various uh, reproduction and uh, the crossover method and then similarly we would keep on going uh, from one generation to another generation till we uh, achieve uh, a convergence stage so we will talking about how that convergence can also be achieved right so let us also assume that uh, the weights uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, zero population that is the first population set is represented this uh, this way and the the the, uh, the weights which are extracted from uh, each of the uh, each of the genes uh, would be represented in the form of ci uh, for the zero population right so these are the representation that we would be using for the example so sort of our fixed weight set wi uh, the the bp is trained for all the input instances given that is the three input output pairs given right so the next is uh, next we would do uh, let us also uh, uh, let suppose this uh, out one uh, output one two three are calculated so the, let us define the formula for output also so the, the, the error uh, so at every point of time we have what a target value and we have what what the output value suppose so uh, we had three inputs and three outputs right so we had three, uh, three targets and three outputs so we would be first calculating the uh, the square uh, root mean square uh, for each of the uh, three inputs so there would be three uh, errors e1 e2 e3 the calculation is fairly simple that can be understood that is target minus of output uh, similarly target minus output for the second uh, uh, second input or the second this first input corresponding to the first input second input so because we have pairs of input right so similarly we have three weights we have calculated the root mean square by uh, doing what we calculated what we, we uh, added up all the errors then we found the root mean square right and then in order to calculate the fitness what we did is whatever error we calculated it was taken one by e so this one by e would be considered to be as the fitness uh, for a chromosome uh, one of uh, one for, uh, for the initial population or for any population i right so uh, each and every chromosome would be evaluated in terms of this fitness value and then we would be uh, uh, analyzing the various uh, uh, the chromosomes so various solutions which are there uh, which can be the probable cases for considering uh, as input to the uh, to the, the BPN. So we would be then selecting the more fitter chromosomes and then uh, we would uh, take it to the further generations in a quest to find a very fit uh, chromosome, right? The similar way that we used to do for uh, uh, finding the most optimal answer in uh, by applying the identical gothams. Now, next is your uh, uh, so this is how the architecture may uh, visually look. We have uh, uh, the set of chromosomes 40 chromosomes represented in the same manner 
then we would be extracting the weights then we would be uh, extracting weights we would be finding uh, we would be applying the uh, uh, the various uh, genetic operators here in order to uh, extract the waste, we would be applying the back propagation, then we would be getting the error, we would be calculating those errors, then we would be calculating the fitness value. We will go through an example in order to understand how uh, the entire uh, process takes place. Uh, rest, uh, we would, uh, uh, rest would be your uh, reproduction phase. In this phase, the, the, the mating pool is first formed before uh, the parent and the chromosomes uh, can reproduce to deliver the offspring. Because once uh, I have generated the chromosomes, then I have to uh, make them go for the reproduction phase where we can get the newer or the uh, uh, better solutions. The rest of the things we will do in the uh, uh, next lecture from here on. Thank you for now.